Canada's premiers have turned their focus to asylum seekers in our country as the situation has simply become too big to ignore. A record of over 140,000 people entered Canada last year seeking asylum, and of that number, 90% settle in either Ontario or Quebec. Francois Legault is speaking up and saying enough is enough. And when it comes to Doug Ford, well, it's not exactly clear where he stands on this asylum seeker issue. It's as if he wants to say that there are too many entering Ontario, which there are, but he doesn't want to come across as being anti-immigration, so instead, he boasts, he proudly boasts, about Ontario's record population growth. And on top of that, he wants the federal government to give all of Ontario's asylum seekers work permits. And on the other hand, Danielle Smith, who really is turning out to be quite a disappointment on immigration, is now saying that Alberta is taking in too many as well. Manitoba and Newfoundland, meanwhile, are the only two provinces in Canada publicly asking to take more. We all know that this is completely unsustainable. We can't go on with a policy of mass immigration while also being the landing ground for the world's asylum seekers. When our people are struggling to be able to afford rent and to enter the housing market, and when our young people can't find work and are struggling to put food on their table, we can't be in a position where provincial and federal governments are spending billions of dollars a year to house asylum seekers in hotels. Besides equalization, this seems to be the main topic of debate between premiers and Justin Trudeau. So let's bring you up to speed on what premiers are saying about this. Before we do, however, be sure to drop a like on this video, help us out with subscribing to the True North YouTube channel, and the common question for the episode is this. Should Canada put a cap on asylum claims? Let me know your answer in the comments section below, and let's get into it. As it stands right now, there are currently over 597,000 non-permanent residents living in Quebec, and of that number, 190,000 are asylum seekers. It's too much! It's too much! Of course, that number is completely ridiculous. You have to start thinking about where these people are going to live, how they're going to be able to contribute to the economy, how they're going to fit into Quebec culture and Canadian culture. And to Francois Legault, the situation is untenable. How much success did you have last night speaking to the other premiers trying to convince them to take on more asylum seekers? But first, I want to keep private uh, discussions private, but uh, I, I, I think it's clear that it doesn't make sense right now. We have 190,000 asylum seekers. We cannot afford housing reason. We don't have enough teachers. We don't have enough nurses. And uh, the future of French on the island of Montreal is in place. So we really need to first decrease this number. Uh, of course, some are open to transfer some asylum seekers in other provinces. Some are not because most of them are not qualified. So uh, other provinces, they would like to uh, have only qualified immigrants. Francois Legault's request to Canadian premiers and the federal government isn't to lower the number of asylum seekers allowed to enter the country. Instead, it seems to be to ship these asylum seekers to other provinces, spread them out across the country more evenly. And as you could have guessed, the situation in Ontario is equally as bad. In 2023, it was calculated that the number of non-permanent residents living in Ontario was over 1.2 million people. And by January 1st of 2024, the beginning of the year, the number of asylum claimants in Ontario was 124,000. And that number in January 1st of 2023 was only 77,000. An increase of over 47,000. And what's even more striking is that Ontario's non-permanent resident population increased by 42% from the year prior. At the beginning of 2023, the number of non-permanent residents was at 844,000. Now, as I said before, that number is over 1.2 million. And so when Doug Ford took the mic last week at the Premier's meeting in Halifax, of course he was able to admit the obvious, that Ontario is taking in a lot of refugees, far too many. But of course, Ford went a step further, calling on the federal government to speed up work permit processing for all of these asylum seekers. After all, what are they gonna do if they're just living in hotels and not really doing anything, just collecting benefits? I think when it comes to asylum seekers, uh, both Quebec and Ontario share the, the front of it. Um, and we're just asking the federal government to give our fair share. We've spent over a billion dollars in Ontario uh, every single year 
Uh, and I, I talk to these these folks. I have quite a, quite a few of them up in uh, my riding, and they want to work. They want a better life. And it's taking way too long to get a working visa from the federal government. Uh, we've received just Toronto, uh, has received about $162 million, but we're spending over a billion dollars. Uh, so we, we need the working visa uh, for these folks as quickly as possible. Now, according to Doug Ford, the province of Ontario is spending over a billion dollars a year to house asylum seekers. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith and British Columbia Premier David Eby were both asked by reporters if they were willing to lighten the load off of Ontario and Quebec and take in more refugees. But they also are taking in quite a lot. So they're running into the same problems. Where do we house these people? And how do we make sure that the needs of our own Canadian citizens, those that live in our respective provinces, are being put first? I can tell you Alberta has uh, is now the destination for 22% of newcomers to Canada, even though we're only 12% of the population. So I would say that uh, both Quebec and Alberta share an interest in having the federal government support those asylum seekers so that we can provide the social services, provide the integration, provide the language training. And um, you know, I've watched that uh, Minister, uh, the Premier Legault has had some success in getting the federal government to meet his commitment. We would like them to meet the same commitment in Alberta. The only two provinces in Canada willing to actually take in more asylum seekers happen to be Manitoba and Newfoundland. You know, I'd be curious to know what Manitobans and Newfoundlanders think about that idea. Would they like for their provincial governments to be spending hundreds of millions of dollars to assist asylum seekers? Look at this data compiled by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada to show you just simply how big of an issue this really is. Asylum claims into Canada have skyrocketed over the past two years. 2022, with 91,700 asylum claims, was its own record, only to be surpassed by last year's numbers at 144,000. In 2023, the majority of asylum claims came from people fleeing Mexico. Underneath Mexico, you had India, Nigeria, Turkey, and Colombia. I want to now point you to this very important piece of data compiled again by Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. It's broken down in the first three months of 2023 and then for the rest of the year. In March of 2023, the federal government shut down Roxham Road, the infamous illegal point of entry in Quebec where so many asylum seekers would enter Canada. Before the federal government shut down Roxham Road, 45% of asylum claims came between official ports of entry. That's just another way of saying they came into this country at an illegal entry point. After the federal government shut down Roxham Road, 54% of asylum claims were made inland. They were made once people had already entered Canada, followed by airports, people flying into Canada and immediately claiming asylum upon landing in our country. And then you have land ports of entry, and then you have 0.1% of asylum claims coming from illegal points of entry. That decision to shut down Roxham Road was part of the Safe Third Country Agreement with the United States. It seems as though the majority of asylum seekers in Canada are being housed in hotels at the federal government's expense, at your expense. It would follow that they're also being fed at your expense as well. But it's very clear that this entire situation is becoming untenable. And if Canada is bound by international law to continue accepting infinite numbers of asylum seekers simply because they make a claim of asylum upon entering Canada, how exactly does this problem ever get fixed? Infinite growth is simply untenable in Canada. We are not prepared for such rapid increases in population growth. It might make GDP numbers look good, but it doesn't help Canadians. It hurts Canadians. We have the data to prove that. GDP per capita is decreasing. Canadians are getting poorer. No matter where they come from, Canadians are not benefiting from infinite population growth. But according to Ontario Premier Doug Ford, this is all cause for celebration. Friends, as everyone in this room knows, this region is growing at a rapid pace. Matter of fact, not just this region, Ontario is the fastest growing region in North America, bar none. And I'll give you one example. When you talk to the two great governors, one from Florida and Texas, they love saying, 
We're the fastest growing state in the U.S. And yes, they're, they're the fastest growing states. They bring in a thousand people a day. So that's 365,000 each state. Last year, we brought in over 800,000 people. So we're bringing more people than both Texas and Florida combined. We're over 16 million people. We'll surpass New York State in probably another five, six years. And what has all this done to Ontario? Does Ontario feel like a better province to live in now? Does it feel like a more united province? Does it feel like a province where families can actually start a life for themselves and raise their children? Or does it feel like it's maybe getting a little bit worse? Does it not feel like the province your parents might have grown up in? Are all these new people making you wealthier? Making you feel more financially stable? The comments underneath this video are quite telling. Yeah, that's why Ontario is getting worse. Odd flex when your province's economy is performing worse than Alabama and Mississippi combined. I hate what they've done to the once beautiful Ontario and Toronto. Rest in peace, Ontario healthcare. Some may take this commentary to be just out and out anti-refugee. That's fine, I don't really care what they have to say, but it's just simply not true. I'm sure there are plenty of stories of refugees who have come to this country and have made an impact, have done good for this country and have contributed to this country. But the reality is simply this. Canadians are falling behind. Our standard of living seems to be dropping. Whatever graphs and statistics may say, we're getting poorer in this country. We're not getting wealthier. Things are more expensive. It's impossible to afford housing and to even afford rent in many cases. We're not in a position to house the refugees of the world anymore. I don't think we ever were in a position, but that has been part of Canada's global image. Things change, situations evolve. We're living through that right now. And when it comes to housing infinite numbers of asylum seekers, we are not in the position we were in 10 years ago. Now is just not the time to expand this program. It clearly and obviously is the time to restrict it. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for us today on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.